we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we are looking at X-Men Days of Future Past Doomsday, Issue 1. This is a miniseries from Marvel Comics in 2023, written by Mark Guggenheim, pencils by Manuel Garcia, inks by Cam Smith, colors by Yen Nitro, letters by VCs Clayton Cowles, cover by Jeff Shaw and Edgar Delgado, sister editor was Drew Baumgartner, editor was Mark Basso, Jordan White, senior editor. The title's way too long and the cover's okay. Logan's barely barely in the book, so it was a bit misleading. Same as Storm, and she has shorter hair in this one. So we venture back to the Days of Future Past once again, so we could tell another story from that era. And immediately, we get several people like Banshee getting killed fairly brutally in the book. We also see that Kitty Pride is married to Colossus, and their children have a very harsh, harsh ending. And then the book jumps around with the background. We see Destiny kills Senator Robert Kelly and then Stryker being sworn in and the general anti-mutant sentiment. The Sentinels start marching around and when the Avengers quit they get a bunch of substitutes like Obadiah Stone and John Walker to replace the heroes and they get a replay of the Stamford incident that led to the Civil War comic miniseries only this time it's the mutants that are blamed instead of the Superhero Registration Act and we learned that this was all orchestrated by a small cabal of evildoers, but they are quickly losing control of the situation. And then we learn Spider-Man goes down like a punk because apparently he's not smart enough to run away or fight back, so he just gets killed, and that is really pathetic and stupid. And when they learn that the Brotherhood is up to stealing some nukes, the X-Men go to stop them, and Magneto pulls a fast one, and a bunch of people get killed. We lose some more important heroes, and bad stuff happens. Overall, it was a pretty interesting interesting story. I think there was an over-reliance on the hatred of mutants as a talking point instead of how much they're rebelling and fighting back. Made them a little too much like victims and not enough like heroes. And I'm not going to be able to explain that real well. It just came off as poor me through the entire book. And Spider-Man's death was stupid and pathetic like I said. But overall I didn't hate it. I thought it was a reasonably decent read. It had a lot of potential so I will be picking up issue two and reading that. The art wasn't bad either overall. There's a few faces that look really weird like Banshee has a very weird looking face but overall the art was pretty solid and there's some really good shading techniques in here that worked really well but if you want to watch a bunch of heroes get slaughtered this is probably for you and I did like some of the heroics even though there's a lot of whinging and whining about what victims they are through the entire thing so I'll pick up the next issue and hopefully that'll be good. Five dollars was a bit exorbitant for the what you're getting though I thought it was at best a three or four dollar book but it was definitely readable not the greatest thing I've ever read but definitely not the worst either especially for the x-men in the past few years this was probably some of the better x-men stuff so that's going to do it for this one thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future reviews if you'd like to support the channel in other ways links are in the description to various support methods and as always we hope to see you on the next one